Thank you, Daniela. It is time for the headline and presented by Miller Lite. Our guest is four-time Stanley Cup champion, currently professional scout for the Detroit Red Wings, the one and only number 18, Kirk Malpe. Uh, Kirk, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Hey, Eric. Thanks for having me. I'm glad to be here. Well, I want to get into it. All, all week long, Fox is showing uh, uh, the 1997 Stanley Cup final, uh, all the games. Obviously, you and the grind line were stars in that series. But before that, I want you to talk about, because people tend to forget, at that point in 1997 when you were playing for the Stanley Cup, you were almost the forgotten team. Like People were almost labeling you as... The, t- the greatest team that's never going to win anything, unfortunately. What was the team's mindset when you know that people were almost kind of labeling you as, you know, underachievers? Yeah, well, you know, you know, fortunately, we had a lot of experience. Uh, you know, we had a, still had a good chunk of guys. Uh, I wasn't part of the 95 team that went to the finals against New Jersey and lost. Uh, but we had a bunch of guys around that team. The, the next year, obviously, losing to Colorado can't be, you know, just can't get over the hump against the good teams, can't win the big games. Uh, and then that was really no different coming into the, the 96 97 playoffs. Um, you know, we beat some good teams to get to the final, and then obviously getting there against, uh, uh, against a team like Philadelphia with obviously a guy like Eric Lindros, the Legion of Doom, him and Renberg and LeClaire. Uh, no one really gave us a chance because we were the smaller European, too many Europeans and, and not tough enough, not physical enough uh, that we wouldn't be able to match up against them. And, um, you know, we, we kind of blocked things out. And I think for the guys that were there, the two previous years going through the losses, uh, uh, you know, used that experience to, to move forward and block things out, block negativity out. And I just remember that when we when we got into Philadelphia for game one for the media day and got ready to, for game one, like, I don't even remember being really nervous. I just wanted to get out and play the game, get out and start the finals game one and, um, you know, give it our best. We felt that we could win. We knew that if we played our best hockey and especially the way that we were playing up until that time, that we would get have a good chance of winning. We didn't expect a sweep. I don't think anybody expected that one way or the other, but... Um, I just thought that we were playing as good a hockey as anybody and, and maybe as good as we've ever played as a, as a team uh, over the last two to three years. And, and uh, you know, obviously uh, it worked out and we were able to, to win in four. But, uh, you know, we just we played the way we felt we could play and wanted to play to, to win. And, and that's what happened. Well, I look at it and Scotty Bowman did two things. Uh, in that series against the Legion of Doom and the Philadelphia Flyers at Stanley Cup Final. One was playing Nick and Larry uh, against the Legion of Doom, having them out on the ice. And the other was, uh, more times than not, playing the grind line. You, Chris Draper, and Joe Koser against them. As a matter of fact, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought you started game one. That was You guys started... Uh, uh, game one, you were the first line out against the Legion of Doom, which really seemed to throw them off. <laughs> when Scotty started our line against the Legion of Doom, um, you know, that's obviously a big, a big platform in, in, in the hockey world, especially obviously. And, and to start our line against, uh, you know, a line like that was telling not just our team, but I think their team that, you know, we're, we can play anybody against you. And, you know, you got us, you know, so-called fourth line with two Hall of Famers, like you said, Nick and Murph. Um, and we, like I said, though, like I don't remember being nervous. I just remember going out there. Didn't matter if it was if it was Lindros's line or or their fourth line. We just went out and wanted to play that we were capable of playing. And and then uh, you know we just uh, we just felt confident, and that's the way we played. We played confident as a line. We played confident as a team. And as the game went on, and as the series went on, we just felt like we had the momentum on our side and the confidence on our side and, and you need still need some things to happen and stay healthy. But uh, we, we were full marks for, for the way we played in that series. When you, when the grind line, the supposedly fourth line scores the first two goals, doesn't that get in the other team's head? Isn't that a statement? Well, a little bit, because obviously I'm sure they did their homework and, uh, you know, see who our offensive guys were. And and I'm sure within their game plan, you know, what they wanted to make sure they were doing when those guys were on the ice. And, 
And, you know, for me, that the first goal, the shorthanded goal, I was actually getting ready to take a slap shot before I passed it to Drapes because I heard someone coming. I knew someone was coming, but I didn't know it was my teammate, my linemate Drapes, on a 2 and 0 and of all times shorthanded. So uh, uh, I, I'm glad I was ready when I made the pass to him. He gave it right back, and I was ready for it to one-touch it upstairs for the, for the goal. But... Um, yeah, and then when Joey picked off a pass, I'm not sure who he picked it off. It might have been the big sh Shell Samuelson. And he went in and made a great move back, uh, backhand shelf with Drake's back door wide open. But he scored, so that it, it's all good. But, uh, yeah, I think maybe from a mental standpoint from there, from Philly's standpoint, you know, when you, when you have uh, us scoring goals, uh, especially the first two goals of the game, and the, and the big guys haven't even gotten the score sheet yet, um, maybe they – you know, not panic, but maybe are starting to second guess a little bit or, or, or get a little nervous or, you know, feel the pressure a little bit more. I mean, you can't win, you know, the old cliche, you can't win it in the first game, but you can, you know, maybe put yourselves behind the eight ball to lose it. And, and uh, you know, yeah. So I think for us to come out and score goals, uh, the first two goals in game one, as the visiting team, as the underdogs, I think that definitely helped us, but it sent a message to, to them and, and the hockey world that we were for real. But let's go to game two. The grind line was not done. Uh, Kurt Maltby comes and scores the game-winning goal in game two. I guess by that time, you're just a wealth of confidence at that point, Kirk, right? You guys are world beaters. You go into game two in Philly and say, Legion of Doom, we're going to take this game. Well, uh, I, I like the way you put it, but I mean, we still had a lot of respect for that team and that line in particular, but, uh, but we were confident still. I mean, we weren't cocky. We didn't, you know, listen, like I said, we had a lot of guys that were on that, on our team from, you know, the 95 and 96 runs that fell short and, and, and guys learned. And, and, you know, again, cliche, cliche is not to get too high or too low and this and that, but. I thought we did a great job as a, as a team that once game one was over, yeah, we got one in the books, but we worried about game two and what happened was then and, and now we have to be ready for game two. And, and we were, and we came out, we played hard, we played well. I thought, I thought during the whole series, we controlled the play a lot. And and uh, I'd like to sit here and say that my goal in game two was coast to coast and I text all of his jock and, and, and put a top shelf. But to be honest with you, my recollection of it is I got the puck around our blue line, maybe just in, outside the blue line. And I had been out there a bit and I was going to change shortly thereafter. And as I'm coming down the ice, uh, the bench, it was in the second period. The benches were on my, my right hand side. So I was going to, you know what? I, I mean, I'm, I'm quite a ways out. I'm going to take a slapper. Lo and behold, I caught him off guard and, uh, I'd like to say that I have a decent shot, but I don't know if it's that good. But, you know, to, to be able to score there, though, uh, and we had a couple goals as a team through that, that, that series that were a little bit from long distance. But, um, you know, it, it's you, you can't score if you don't shoot. And, and for me, on that one, it happened to be a game-winning goal on a, on a shot that I didn't expect to go in. But uh, you take them when you can. When did you, it set in that you guys were going to win the Stanley Cup? Was it after taking the first two games in Philly uh, that when you got back to Detroit? Because you know, I mean, we were both there in 97, obviously. The town was ready to explode when when you guys came back to play game three at the Joe. Yeah, you know, I said a little bit earlier that I wasn't nervous at all. I didn't. I don't remember being nervous. I, I do remember being a little nervous for Game Four. Uh, you know, I remember coming to the rink. It was a nice sunny day. Um, you know, and uh, you know, driving to the rink, trying to soak it up, trying to just live in the moment. You know, and it's easy to say that stuff now, but I remember just I I usually get at the rink. You know, for a seven thirty game, I would be there around four forty five, five o'clock at the latest, and. And I remember driving there and just the people that were already downtown in the bars, in the restaurants, walking the streets with the jerseys. I mean, and then obviously when we came into the players parking lot, the people that were already amassed on the stairs and just the, it was, it was just the, the, the atmosphere was phenomenal. And it was, it would have been a shame for us not to, to, you know, again, not that we expected to sweep, but it would have been a shame not to win that game, to win the Stanley cup. And, and we, as a team, I thought we kind of came out a little bit flat in game one. We didn't play great. Uh, Philly, you know, I think they just kind of figured they had nothing to lose, really. They were down 3 nothing, and they came out, played a decent game. But, um, 
you know, we just, we just, uh, we, we got going, got a little momentum. So we did score, I believe it was Nick scored at the late in the first period to get a one nothing lead. And, um, you know, we just, you know, it was just, it was a great way to, to finish the season. Obviously not just by winning the Stanley Cup, but be able to do it at Jolo Serena in front of our home, tar- home crowd and, uh, and celebrate with them was, you know, you couldn't have written the script any better. Well, no, and then of course, as as he likes to call himself, the blind squirrel found his nut, and uh, Darren McCarty had scored that. It scored. I, I one of the best moves I think I've ever seen in hockey. Uh, uh, you know, the rest is history. Uh, Detroit, after forty two years, Stanley Cup champions, couldn't have been a better feeling. I guess Kirk is the first one still the best one. I mean, I, you know, I, if I had a dollar for every time I was asked which one's the best one. I mean, yeah, the first one's the first one. I mean, it's it's like your first kiss, I guess. You know, it's like you, you just – it's you don't know what to expect. I mean, you kind of are – you know, you're celebrating, you're yelling, you're hugging, you're everything with everybody. Then you get to see your family afterwards. And obviously the, 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 the champagne starts going into the into the uh, the cup and drinking all that and drinking beers. And just the, the, the celebration begins. But, I mean, just – on the ice, it's it was just amazing how like with the confetti coming down from the, the 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 ceiling and and the guys on the ice hugging and and just looking around the the, the arena and seeing the celebration with the fans. I mean, it, it, it's it was you know you still think about it. And it gives me chills. Like just it, it kind of slows down to a degree where you just are able to soak everything in and and thank God for technology to be able to go back and watch some things and watch games and watch the celebrations and the parades and all that. But, um, yeah, it was just, I mean, that gold Mac, I mean, I got to comment on that. That was, I mean, I I still remember (laughs) Thomas Sandstrom gave it to him from the boards in our end. Mac comes out one-on-one versus Ninema. Mac went to make a move, faked him going one way. And then even just how quickly he cut the, the puck back in on his backhand to forehand on Hextall, and then slide it into the empty net was uh, was just you know you couldn't again you couldn't write a better script for a game winning Stanley Cup goal. But with that said, I have to ask you real quick in the remaining like a minute minute and a half we have here, and I hate to put you on the spot, but the moves the Red Wings made this off season from the stall trade, I'm not going to ask you to get into the draft too much, and then the free agent acquisitions. This has been a very good and productive off season for the Red Wings. Yeah, absolutely. I, I believe we, we made some positive strides in signing guys. Um, you know, uh, we didn't maybe make the big sexy deals that we've made in years past, you know, especially back in the 90s. But, but I mean, we brought some guys in, you know, like you said, with the stall, a guy that's going to solidify uh, a spot back there. A lot of experience is going to help our young guys out back there. And, um, you know, Stetcher, uh, back there, you know, you need to play decent defense and keep try to keep the puck out of your net. Um, you know, I think we're gonna we're gonna you know we got a goalie with Grice that you know and with the Islanders there, he's an experienced guy. He's had a good last few years, and probably I would think they're gonna with Bernier they're gonna you know share share whatever the schedule looks like. But I mean, from from a team standpoint uh, of the of the free agent moves that we've made. Uh, I think we're a better team now. Obviously, we got to go out there and show it, and they got to go out there and do it and prove that they're they're capable of doing and earning the ice time that they're going to get. But I think that you know it's going to allow some of our young guys to grow, whether it's with the big club or whether it's in GR. Uh, it's not. It's going to allow us not to rush guys and, and and bring them into situations that maybe they're not ready for, which is which is what we were able to do way back in, in the day of the '90s, where we were allowed to let guys just go learn to be pros down in in the minors. So uh, I'm excited for the season, whenever it's going to start, whatever it's going to look like. Uh, I, I'm dying to get back into a, into a rink and, and watch some hockey. Um, I, I get some of that with my son right now, but uh, I miss I miss NHL hockey live for sure, and, and I'm, I'm hoping that it, it's back sooner than later. But I do, from a sta- team standpoint, believe that we are a better team this year moving forward with the signings that we made, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing the new guys and, and the current guys and some of the young guys making a push to, to be a Detroit Red Wing this coming year. Well, you know, you said it so eloquently as you usually do there, uh, uh, Kirk, but I, I agree with you. You know, one of my favorite things is being over at uh, Little Caesars Arena and and bugging you during the game and uh, trying to uh, find out what's really going on. What's Steve thinking? But uh, God only knows well, what Steve's thinking. No, yeah, no, I, I, I'm glad. I mean, there's it, 
up there, it's really big now. I mean, at the Joe, I couldn't hide. There was nowhere to go at the Joe in the press box. You could get trapped <laughs> up there. So at least up at the Joe or at LCA, if I want to, if I want to avoid you for a little bit, there's lots of space up there. But no, I enjoy you coming over, depending on what's going on in the game and talking. And and that's what it's. That's what I love about it. You get up there, whether it's with someone like you or someone, another scout that is from another team, and just talking about guys. Usually, the biggest conversation up there is uh, why is it so darn cold up in the press box. But that's uh, that's talk for another day. <laughs> Yeah, that definitely is time for another day. All right, Kirk Maltby, uh, thanks for joining us on the headliner. You know, it's always a pleasure. I mean, I, you know, we go back a long way, and uh, you know, I, I just appreciate not only your time but your friendship over the years. And uh, uh, best of luck, and hopefully, we'll see you at Little Caesars Arena real soon. Yeah, thanks for having me, Art. I appreciate it. And yeah, let's uh, let's hopefully uh, ho hockey's back sooner than later. Yep. That'll do it for this edition of The Headliner, presented by Miller Lite. It is the original light beer. It's only 96 calories. It tastes delicious, and it's available for delivery. Daniela, back to you.